Hello, everyone. We are back with Cars Casually, the tuning guys. Uh, and we have with us the Cars Casually gang tuning edition. And we have got G. We have got Francis, the tuner guy, who was really a tuner guy. We've got Kyle, a race car driver. And he was just explaining to us the aerodynamics of his Miata hood that he's chopping up, which will be a whole nother discussion. Then we have Alvin Oi, who I've hung out with for two days in a row, which was really fun. But I, we both had too much coffee. Um, and we were talking vintage cars. Uh, so today we are talking about, actually, uh, Francis, why don't you roll us in? What are we talking about today? Yes, uh, today we're talking about this uh, nicely done 1968 Toyota Toyo Pet Corona. It's a four-door sedan, which is actually owned by Alex Lim and his son, Son Son Lim. It's a father-son project, uh, which was done way back in 2013. And then um, what's great about it is that it's not a barn find, but they bought this car from a close friend, was, which explains why the car is intact as it is, mm. save for some stuff they did. But they, along the way, they managed to um, not really modernize, just update the, the engine and some of the running gear. But that's basically it. It's a four-door uh, sedan, Toyo Pet, which is a... Uh, Highly reminiscent of the builds they do also in Japan, eh? which is, you know, what, what makes it great. And being a father and son project, also nice. They That's are. cool. Um, you said it was fairly intact. Does that mean they didn't do body work at all? Mm, minimal, minimal. Because okay. they changed the engine, so they mainly changed the supports and stuff. Oh, well, also some um, of the trim. So okay. this car was never a taxi in Manila. No, no. You know, I remember these cars. That's growing right. Up as a child, do you remember the car? These were taxis. These were new right. taxis back in the day, the and I remember the riding them. Generations of Coronas, yes, they were taxis. Yeah, yeah even, even the one I drove to school, it wasn't mm. a taxi, but it was a taxi car, right? So, I think yeah, that was I mean, the fifth generation. This one is the third generation Corona. Third generation, yeah, right? Third generation. Yeah. 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 Now, we, we were having, okay, we, we, before we started recording this, we were actually talking about the car already, so we're going to do that now. Um, what was the original engine of this car? Mm, it originally came with a 2R engine, mm, which two is R. Toyota's <laughs> R yeah. families of engine, which is a yeah. reverse flow engine, if you remember. It has iron heads and iron cylinder head, iron cylinder heads and iron engine blocks. Mm -hmm. They look and, like... And, and uh, it wasn't cross-flow. It wasn't cross-flow, yeah. no? They look like smaller versions of the more popular 12R that we know here in Manila. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now the 12R wasn't 1500 really... cc. 1500 yes, cc. That 2R 600 was CC. like. I think the 2R was like 1200. I think. 1200. Yeah. The 12R. The 5R, was... And then the 12R, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Used for the silver edition '82 model Corona. Yeah, yeah. It was had, one of the longest oh. engines. Where are we yeah. going back, man? 18R, so, 22R. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Kyle, you said this was. I, I and this surprised me. You said this was brought into the U.S. Um, what engine was in it in the U.S. then? Yeah. So right. this 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 car is, I think, what put Toyota on the map. You know, they had this is the first international car. There were import this is the third generation so the second generation didn't do too well but this car uh was shipped worldwide you know the the u.s had it in the u.s they were called uh the mark two or the mark four and it had an 18 it had an 18 r so which was a two liter engine yeah and yeah. they had the they had a four door and a wagon. I'm not sure if we had the two door. I doubt we had the two door. I think the two door only came in Japan. Uh, in Japan I think and this was basically a smaller well, smaller I know, of the crown, smaller, you know, yeah. uh, offering. And, and I, strangely, it, it was never called Toyo Pet in, in the U.S. Yeah. They were, they were, cause Toyo Pet was really only known in, in, in Japan. In Japan. The, yeah, they had Toyo Pet dealers, I think. Yeah. As a matter of fact, Toyo Pet is still used to this day in Japan. For this car, yeah. yeah. Really? For what cars? It's, uh, like, it's the name of a dealership now. It's a dealership. Mm -hmm. It's a brand dealership now, Toyo Pet. They Not cars anymore. More reminiscent of, you know, those days and for the enthusiasts, I guess. That's interesting. I didn't know the 18R was that old. Oh, it's <laughs> been around a long time. Like, you know, Francis was saying, it's a non-cross flow head, iron block, iron cylinder iron head. <laughs> um, it was mocking the number and yeah, it powered everything. Mm -hmm. uh, everything jeeps trucks cars name yep. it 
of the back. Well, of the this is 1968, uh, right? <laughs> so, yeah, 68, 68. Yeah. 68. Okay. These cars were right. built in 1964. That was the first. That was what. That's when they came out. Yeah. And I think they one. ran for five years, maybe. Um, and uh, yeah, very, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were very popular in Manila. I mean, like you know, we were talking about it growing up. In my childhood, I these were taxis, and I can still yeah. remember how they smelled. That smell of vinyl. <laughs> You know, they, 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 they were cheap cars that the the Japanese. I mean, you, you mustn't remember in sixties, the Philippines was a a richer country than Japan. Well, I wasn't. Yeah, I was born. I was born in '69. We're blanking you up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, Alvin, did these did these car? Alvin, do cars like this end up uh, showing at Mias? At your oh, yeah, yeah, we we had a few of these. Um, uh -huh. in past shows. Yeah. Did they... Okay, for anyone who doesn't know this, Alvin runs uh, the Manila International Auto Show, mm -hmm. uh, one of the premier shows in our neck of the woods, uh, and he always has really cool cars. Uh, so there. Um, uh, so do they show up in your show? Uh, yes, uh, yes, the, they do. Usually like it's from the old, car, uh, old school car group. Are they the how how modified are they like engines? Most of them are stock, I think. Yeah, but except the wheels and yeah, mm -hmm. it, it did with some some small accessories, steering wheels, etc. But, but they're, the they're not really that modern. Yeah. Okay, so in the Philippines, this car came with the two R. In the U.S., it came with the eighteen R. Um, uh, Francis, what does this car have now? The when you shot it. Yeah, this car now has a 20 valve 4 AG engine. Okay. With a six speed transmission. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So they, they, and, they, uh, no, they, the owners kasi are diehard Toyota enthusiasts. So yeah. they didn't want to end up with a slow engine that's unreliable. Sure. So four they AG, changed sir. it to the more popular black top 4 yeah. AG engines. Eh, mm, they're okay. more reliable and and more power also. Okay. The 4 AG didn't, was never. Uh, it's not period correct, or is it? It's not period correct. No, That's the only modern thing about this car. Right the right okay. wheels is, and the engine. Okay. But it's um, more, it's a, a popular engine swap among Toyota yeah, the four, uh, enthusiasts. Eh. The okay. Ford came desirable, out in the 80s. Yeah. Yes, around the 80s. Yeah, yeah. The 80s. Now, so Kyle, you did, newer, you did a project here as Ford. well. Kyle, you did one. a project with this car as well in the States. I did. What? Well, three or four years ago, my uh, my brother's uh, best friend had bought a Mark II wagon and it needed work. The The motor was blown. Um, it was a it was a barn find. It wasn't in very good condition. But anyway, we swapped the, we swapped the motor in and we swapped in a 22R from a junkyard Toyota Hilux. And, <laughs> and it fit. Because the oil pan, the cross member was the same. Um, well, similar. The oil pan, you didn't have to change the cross member for the engine to go in. It was a much bigger engine, but it was carbureted. And that was a fun project. Um, oh, yeah. It was a five, five speed, a four speed car. So, yeah. And, you know, these cars, they have, uh, this was before the time of McPherson Strut. So these cars have an <laughs> upper and lower oh, yeah. suspension arm, pa, you know. Mm -hmm um shock over coil so yeah uh very different in those days so francis you were saying that the engine was swapped to a 4ag uh 4ag engine so yeah um yeah um i guess they had to modify other stuff or basically the other basically the engine mounts and mm. mounting a uh, in tank fuel pump and some electric cars, but basically that's it. And also they okay. upgraded the power booster because these cars did have power yeah. boosters. Yeah, yeah. They, they didn't have, boosters. that's right. They didn't have those boosters yeah. back in the day. They managed to fit <laughs> in there. And the, oh, as oh. you can see, the modern radiator and the modern uh, cooling fans. Yeah. 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 He, yeah. Ganda, he used a, uh, you know, none of those aluminum blingy radiators, no? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. He was like an original OEM yeah. type with a plastic yeah. tank. And you know these cars also had uh, clutch cables. They didn't have hydraulic. There was no hydraulic system in these cars. <laughs> yeah, no power steering. I mean, you know, no rack and pinion. Yeah. Yeah, there. That's how they grafted the modern power brake booster. 
to yeah. the RT40. <laughs> Again, <laughs> what a the tight diagnostics, fit, huh? you know? Yeah, tight fit. Tight the diagnostics fit, and the uh, reservoir for the clutch, faster there. Yeah, <laughs> and of course, this is easy, like an ECU, too, no? I'm sure. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, ECU. yeah. What's great about the black top also it is the individual throttle bodies. Eh? You can uh -huh. open the, the air box and put on those velocity stacks. Unlike the, the silver top, which you cannot, because this has the map sensor, eh? whereas the silver top has the airflow meter, eh? so which could, makes the black you, top better. Wait, lang, could uh, you explain that, please, picture. Francis? Could you explain that? Um, what's the difference between the black top and the silver top? It, was it a what is a was it a from Toyota choice that you could that they made? Yeah, um, Toyota offered these both of these engines in different cars: eh? the AE one one Corollas, the Levins, mm. the Soarers. You know, Toyota has many cars, so the black top is more desirable because it makes more power. It's factor rated around one hundred sixty five. Mm. Whereas the silver top is rated just around 150. And the black top is more desired because you can do this. <laughs> you um, can open up the throttle bodies and put velocity stacks. Whereas with silver top, you cannot. Because the so, the throttle... black top, so the black top came with individual throttle body? Yeah, same already? with the silver top. Yes. Both yes. did. Both did. Okay. But the difference is here. As you can see, you can remove the okay. air box and put in this individual so velocity stacks. The, 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 like the Miata, no, Carl? When you see the yeah. Miata, mm -hmm. it's got an AFM, airflow meter. Mm -hmm. Right. That's what controls the amount of air and triggers the ECU to tell you that it needs X amount of fuel. That airflow meter. The, the silver top had that kind of system. Whereas these motors, the black top, didn't. Yeah. They, had a, a, they had a mass Man, airflow mass sensor, sensor. now. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Which is like a little, it's like a little plastic sensor, and that's all it did was meter air yeah. coming in. Yeah. So you could literally pop it off its housing, take off the throttle body, and that sensor will still sense air. Yes. Well, unlike yeah. the AFM, yes. you can't run. You can't run without the AFM connected to the engine. The engine won't run. Yeah, it won't run. So, so what we're seeing now, which are this is not an aftermarket velocity stack type thing. This is just taking out. Yeah. yeah, this is our aftermarket velocity stack. It is. Down to the individual throttle bodies there. So it's not a re you did, it wasn't recarburated. It's really just no. you just you no. just switched velocity stacks. You can yeah. see his, uh, you can see the worm clamps. They're just clamped onto yeah. the throttle body. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah, the velocity stack. Yeah, okay, okay. That's how they're attached. They don't come with throttle. They don't come with. Um, Velocity stacks. When yeah. you look at a 4AG blacktop, it's got an air box. Okay. Yeah. Actually, and inside in the air box, box it, yeah. acts, it has velocity stacks, but they're not shaped this way. Right, Francis? Yeah. Yeah. It, it has, Toyota has this tuned thing. Tune, it directs yeah. air. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> they have the baffles inside, which direct yeah. air. Yeah. yeah. Unlike this one. But though this will look better and sound better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, I'm in, a, I'm in a conversation now where I know so little. Compared to everybody else, I mean, I I used to work on my car, but I never I never got up to this level. Um, uh, but that's the car I knew but, how to fix. But a lot of tuners are, <laughs> I know, are retrofitting this I know, this individual throttle body from Toyota to other engines also. Like they can fit this to an older 4AG 16 valve, mm -hmm. or to even a Miata engine. You know, it's all a matter of I know, like. Electric, uh, electri electrical system, and you know the ECU. You can fit it anywhere onto any, onto any engine, actually. <laughs> That's interesting. You know, what I'd like to see. I'd like to see the wagon. <laughs> at some point, I'd like to see that the wagon. Mark, the Mark IV. Yeah. 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 It's um, okay, so. Go ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, it's it's same boxy thing. Um, it's nice, yeah. but it's old. Yeah, well, because the one we had, the one that we were working on, wasn't really, like I said, it was a barn find, so the paint was bad. It was missing a lot of trim, um, but it was a fun project car. So, if, if so, for cars like this, um, is this particularly extreme, Francis, or not? I mean, it's just basically an engine swap. Did they go nuts with it, or is it just? 
Yeah, what so else did they modify yeah. with um, they, they just modded the ano, upgraded the brakes from an older Corolla, a newer generation Corolla, mm. and they upgraded the struts and the rear shocks at the back. Basically, they didn't want to tamper with the car because they they bought it intact. As you can see on the interior here, it's, it's coming in. It's still a little you know, good. And, and, yeah. and so you know they, that I I think more than the engine swap. I mean, yes, that's a difficult thing to do, and yes, it takes a lot of engineering to do, but finding a car that has all its pieces a 1968 yeah. well, yes. that, yes. that is the difficult yeah. part i mean rare. yeah that's rare more than the engine swap being difficult i think finding parts for these cars is mm. very very difficult well mm. that's that's what that's what gets to me about uh getting these older cars is that you know you can fix certain things but you can't fix or even find sometimes the right interior parts yeah. you sure can't True. Yeah. True. It's last the red interior, by the way. <laughs> the Look at those interior. vents. Is that like <laughs> an aftermarket air conditioning system? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most air likely, yeah, yeah, it's most cars likely. at the time. Then oh, wow. <laughs> instead of doing a hanging type air con, they, they, mm, they yeah. retrofitted these vents. Into the glove box. Yeah, into the glove box. <laughs> <laughs> but the door cards and the carpet they are all intact. Even the yeah, but it's, it's, it's even it's still got its clock. Yeah, the clock and the radio. <laughs> and the period correct radio. And I think that's a speaker beside the... <laughs> Maybe that's a speaker. I don't know if it could be the speaker beside Where? The, the clock. Yeah, the door card. Uh, oh. Uh, oh, what is that? Usually these cars, when they had a sphere, they only had one speaker. And it was usually in the middle of the dashboard on top. That's <laughs> right. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. I remember yeah. when you said door cards, cards they really were cards, man. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The door cards are there. Yeah. The, you know the the roof lining. You know these are the bits that are and all the the yeah. the, the, and all, the uh, what should we call it? the visors? Man, those things yeah. don't ever last. So what what else did they do in this car? So they, they like you said they changed the brakes, but the brakes were still Toyota brakes. Um, yeah, suspension Toyota. was still Toyota parts, right? So they really kept they really kept brand specific. They didn't go yeah, they didn't go AP racing wheels yeah, or anything no, like no, that. No, no, no. What about the Except speaking of the wheels? Go ahead, go ahead. Those those are Watanabe RS8s, the two-piece wheels, so 15-inch. 15 15-inch? 15 yeah, 15. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, that front lip spoiler, I, I like that. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's, an OE, that's an OE piece for that car? Because I, I, I know they, the two doors, they had you know a sporty race version of these cars. Yeah, no? Yeah, yeah, it's it's speared correct also for the car. Those were the yeah, kind yeah. of spoilers they had back in the day, like yes. what you'd find yes. on Celica's. Yeah. Even on, oh, yeah. Uh, I remember that even, on the Celica. Even on Datsun 510s, I mean, there were. That was the style back in the day. That's style. right. Right, correct. That was the style. <laughs> Wait, let me just change it. You know, it's funny how much we've learned about aerodynamics between now and then. Huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah those are I mean, two pieces. Point... The, the wheels. Yeah, those are two piece. Yeah. So it's probably RS8 a 15 by 6, yeah, 15 by 7, by six maybe. And yeah, yeah, 6 okay. and a half, yeah. <laughs> And and so those mirrors, of, those are probably aftermarket now. Or I mean, the original Toyota, but did they come with a car? I don't think we had mirrors like that in Manila. Back yeah, I think these are Japan style mirrors, yeah. uh, which is mm -hmm. also period for the car also. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. The fender mirrors are uh, Japan, uh, Japan. Mm -hmm. Look at this grill, oh. it's derecho, pa, you know. Yeah, even the bumpers, yeah, the, bumpers no, the nice. lights, <laughs> oh, the side even, Yeah. Look at that! Wow. <laughs> look at that logo, man. <laughs> That's a Corona logo. <laughs> Did you drive yeah. this car, Francis? No, no, I didn't get to drive this car. Kyle, when you drove that, you, the one you made, did you drive it? And when you made oh, it, yeah. you drive it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What did it feel like? Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it had it had 1967 suspension that was... Yeah. Okay, I mean, yeah. and, the, you know, the steering wheel was massive and it had this much play. I mean, the car needed work, you know. It, it, hmm. it, I think the car sat for 15, 18 years when we, when my friend found it. So he had to work on it. But this car, this is, you know, a yeah, far cry. Oh, there's the one you were talking about. There's yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the radio, yeah. There's the clock. So what's the beside it is there. not, what is beside it? What's beside it? I mean, actually, I don't know. Oh, no, the actual yeah, is in the it bottom. Looks like, yeah, yeah. And, and it looks know, like, if you look uh, closely on the left, those are the switch for the wipers. It's a push and pull kind That's of thing. That's right. <laughs> oh, oh, nah, and beneath nah. it is the handbrake, <laughs> which That's is also right. very old school. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> so was this the original dashboard? Yeah. 
That's the original dashboard. Was it actually part. sewn or was that just molded? I think the dash top is uh, repaired. But the gauges, the clock, the range are all original. Even the handle for the handbrake beneath so the wiper. This was an original left hand drive. Yeah, original left hand drive. That's right. It was originally also it. colored blue. I think they also mentioned mm. that when they got it. It was, it was a Manila car. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah, it was, it was a, a Manila, Manila car. car. You were Francis, oh. Yeah, yeah, it was a Manila car. They bought it way mm. back in, I think, in 1981. Pa. They just kept the car. God. Do you guys remember how you, well, this is where we should have Paolo, right? Do you remember how you had to physically push those buttons and, and yeah. the thing would mechanically move inside and you could feel it all? And do you remember <laughs> yeah. these cars? May choke pa? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Every morning, you have to choke more. Especially in the cold morning. Do you remember the old Volkswagens where you had that on the on the floor pan in front, you had the the extra five liters or something <laughs> because you didn't really have a gas gauge. Anybody <laughs> remember those? <laughs> okay. You didn't? No, no. Um, you, had, you had a reserve tank. You didn't have a gas gauge. Wow, look at that. Oh, yeah. Even, the, yeah, even the door seals are intact. Right? The, all the window risers. The, the door cards have been um, refurbished, but stuff like this, like the, the aluminum door seals, they but that's, that's off piece, Francis, Young vinyl. That looks original. It's the lower part that's been yeah. refurbished, yeah. no? Yeah. But uh, yung, ano, yung vinyl. The upper portion of the vinyl looks original, no? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and the windshield winder thing that most people don't even know exists anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you know, these were tiny cars. I remember, I mean, I wasn't, I'm not a very big guy, but, you know, 68, I was eight years old, nine years old. And even then, the car didn't look very big. So you imagine how small these cars are. Yeah. Yeah. yeah compared, to today, right? compared to today, right? Compared to today. Yeah. Yeah. And even though the older model girls, uh, these were small. What's this you're showing us, Francis? Um, I think that's the rear shot. I'm looking for the mm -hmm. watcher box. Yeah, it's taken. You know what's cool? You yeah. know what people hunt for now is stickers. Like all the all the appropriate stickers, all the appropriate badges. Yeah. Yeah, that's a thing. Yeah. No, dude, it's horrible. There was one time I was in, I was and, and this is our friend Carlos fault completely. Um I ended up looking for stickers in in, in racetracks in Europe, right? Uh to use for a very specific project that he Jedi'd me on. Uh, and, um, so I found these great vintage, you know, I mean, outside the, outside the racetrack of like, let's say Nürburgring or whatever, you have these guys who set up and they have all this vintage stuff. And so I chose these things and one was particularly expensive, but I really liked it. And the guy that, and then after I bought it, after I bought the thing, the guy said, okay, don't ever use it. That's an original sticker. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the one thing, so something that my daughter of 13 years old and I have in common is that we have sticker collections now that don't go anywhere. <laughs> might have one here but no um i remember i remember trying to find all the period correct or accurate uh stickers for all the cars look at the mm. taillights on this car oh. they're still nice and mm. clear well i'm cataract no no cracks <laughs> are they new yeah. are they were they are they the original uh, i'm not sure but could be but for a car like this, are you able to get, like, are you able to get parts? Are you able to get replacement yeah. parts? I think some of the emblems came from Australia. I think they had a hard time finding some of the emblems and trim parts also. But I they remember those. Are, it, yeah. But that those emblem in the back is that yeah, is that an architect's logo? Is he an architect? Uh, I think it looks like a Masonic logo. Yeah, 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 yeah. It looks like that to me. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. So. You know, there are companies now that reproduce uh, or produce parts for things like Mercedes, Volkswagens, uh, Miata, yeah. now uh, Miata, uh, Mazda is doing it itself. For a car like this, are you able to source uh, replacement parts that are newly built? Wow, look at that. Yeah, they um, source this. So this is a water bag. It's not a plastic thing. It's a bag, actually. <laughs> this <laughs> is a wiper bag. Is this a wiper yeah. bag? Is it a wiper yeah. bag? Yeah, no? Yeah. yeah, I think it's yeah, it's the wiper oh, bag. Wow. The sources also. Mm. Oh, Just like, like, 
di ba? Like, like in, I think in old box na have this, the wiper bags also. They didn't have plastic containers back then. Can so, you imagine yeah, like when that was a big deal? <laughs> like, wow, we're moving to a real container, not just a bag. Not just a wow. bag. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, they didn't have, that. I know, plastics weren't... Um, That's right. You're true. They yeah, weren't, right. they weren't yeah. high temperature or pl- plastics that could withstand high temps in those days. Exactly. That's true. Like mm. today, where everything is plastic, you have plastic reservoirs. Oh, everything. Right? Intake yeah. manifolds, yeah, everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when we used to see the, we, 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 you would see that sign, right? The, the sticker there. Uh, and it looked like, it looks like it says 10, right? So we call everything yeah. Fujitsu 10. <laughs> 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 Knowing absolutely nothing. So, What is that sign anyway? What does it mean? Do you know? It, it's an old Toyota sign. So does it, is, does it actually say Toyota? I mean, is that uh, how it translates or no? I, I'm not sure, actually. It's, I'm sure it means something. Yeah. Uh, I'll look it up. <laughs> cool. Yeah, one thing I noticed in this car is, um, which was a very Pinoy thing, you know, is uh, young Bosch. Uh, third uh, brake lights <laughs> in the yeah, window. The yeah. yeah, those are very <laughs> yeah. expensive now, no? I mean, yeah. Really, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure, you know, in, in the Japanese classic car show here in Long Beach when they, mm. they attended, that's always a telltale sign that you know the guy building the car is Filipino. Right. You know, only the Pinoy's do that. Yeah, and the uh, rear fog lamp at the back, right? <laughs> and the rear fog lamp. <laughs> and don't forget the KP500. Oh yeah. <laughs> so so if you have if you have this car, uh, what are your choices? I mean, this is, you know, this is. I, I guess you would call this a rest. Would you call this a resto mod or not? Partly, I guess, because it has an updated engine and running gear. Partly, okay. yeah. Okay, because be so they're not going anymore, full no? on. Okay. Yeah, but the, but yeah. what would your other choices be? Would you would you would you be able right. to restore something like this to stock? Yeah, given the the condition of the body, the trim part of that, it could be converted back to stock, like like the steel wheels, you know, the original engine. Actually, it, yeah, yeah. All you need to do to make this car look original is put steel wheels. Yeah. I mean, keep the engine and it look <laughs> like a you know. Yeah, take like out the front engine. spoiler. Yeah. It will look stock. It'll look stock. What what year were those? What would okay, um, so this would this look okay? No, then it's not like a tune look thing. Okay, um, it's not like a race car. This is not like a race car or tune car resto mod, except for the wheels and potentially the spoiler, right? Yeah, and the car being oh. such a rare find down, it's practically mm-hmm. hard to find that uh, Toyota Corona from this era in such a good condition. Hmm. Okay, apparently Al- Alvin came up with this gem of information that he's not sharing, so we're going to tell him. Alvin, tell us about the logo. You just found out about it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I looked it up. A- apparently, it's a, it's a logo that the uh, Toyota decided on after holding a public contest. So, there you go. Okay. So, it's actually a Toyota logo. They came, in, they came out in 1936. 36? Wow. wow. Oh, wrong one. Okay. There, there yeah, you go. There, there, there. <laughs> How long did it take to build the car, Francis? Yeah. Uh, took them probably a year. I think the they spent most the time was spent mostly on paint because they had to repaint everything. Eh? Mm-hmm. See, it told me it, orig- it was originally painted blue. Eh? I think this is the light blue Toyota color we had. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Day, yeah. I remember those cars. Yeah, they changed it to this, like championship white thing mm. yeah. Yeah. so basically mostly the engine uh suspension yeah the engine yeah the, as you were saying the body and most of the interior were still intact so. yeah still intact guys yeah. so yeah. the front spoiler everything is intact mm. it's pretty cool who, who did the restoration brother yeah because uh who? the dad has uh his own shop eh? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's why the dad uh, re- uh, personally rebuilt the engine also. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, okay. like those engines are hard to find there. Eh? Even the plate light, it's still there. You know? did, did they oh. have to upgrade the brake suspension? Uh, uh, yeah. No, just the whole, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they upgraded the, uh, no, the, the brakes. 
from a big body Corolla, I think. This brakes, man. Yeah, yeah this brakes with uh, upgraded also struts. But hmm. there is it's still uh, no, ra- running on uh, leaf springs at the rear. But in front, McPherson, nah? did they change yeah, it? Or yeah. they did? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, they did. <laughs> These cars have drum brakes all around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and with a more powerful engine, yeah, you, you need better yeah. brakes. No. Oh, Otherwise, it might be yeah, dangerous. For, for the yeah. Corona was, if I'm not mistaken, at least the one I remember was the Silver Edition. So now back then, I don't think they had Hydrovax, no? Well, no, 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 yeah. They retrofitted the, the hydro back here. <laughs> nothing, nothing. Was, they had no hydraulic system whatsoever back no. then. Uh-huh. Clutch, <laughs> cable type, uh, brake. Yeah. Looks like a very clean build, no? Yeah, yeah, very clean. yeah, yeah. Because the the father is, I know, has his own shop, a mechanical shop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so nice. they're very knowledgeable in doing these kinds of things. I think they only outsourced the paint, eh? the mechanicals mm-hmm. they did themselves. Mm-hmm. So. But he he killed the exhaust manifold. He kept it original, pal. Yeah, they had they just because of the tight <laughs> confines of the engine bay. You notice they relocated the oil filter, lah. <laughs> but like tight fit. Um, where was the where was the bodywork rusting? Because I remember back in the day, cars tended to rust, you know, a lot more than. <laughs> yeah, but they told me they they had, they only had to do minimal bodywork. Eh? I think you were referring to the DX Rollas before. The left back. Uh, well, the late the, 70s, the yeah. left back. Yeah. Then I remember we had the. Yeah, 70s. Medyo, no? yeah. But the, yeah, the, the, this one, the, I think this generation, the body was better. Was better, oh, better yeah. no? Mm-hmm. I think they were a little more headed. Na, ano, they, they failed to. <laughs> they kind of made a shortcut on the galvanizing process, yata. Hmm. This, was, this was all here saying, so yeah. we really don't know. In Corona, we had to uh, work on the body, especially the trunk area, um, quite a lot. Uh, the way, I remember yeah. there were wounds on the, on the car. <laughs> uh, we, we, had a, we had a lift back before, yeah. <laughs> Every a year, year and a half, it would, uh, a bubble Already. would show up somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. To normally start on the lower panels, eh? that the mm-hmm. wheel well is the lower mm-hmm. parts. Yeah. yeah. And back then we didn't have pressure washers, unlike now we have car wash with you know pressure washers. Oh yeah. yeah but that also <laughs> helps a lot. Eh? <coughs> yeah. So what would you? Oh, no, sorry, I'm back, guys. Hi. Uh, so, what would? What are the other options for this car? If this is kind of a somewhat. Uh, it's it's not a full on resto mod where you're gonna make it a tuner car or something, uh, and it's not a restore to basic. What are the other what other things would you do? Let's say, uh, could you ter- was this this car was never uh, was this ever a race car? I mean, was this model no, no, no. ever a sporty no. car? They not found at all. It a stock car with intact uh, interior panels and intact body, so they decided it was too uh, no precious and rare to cut it yeah. up or make okay, it a true. race car. Okay. So but, I guess that's the most. Here. The, the, in terms of modification, I think that's the extent of modification. That okay, okay. Yeah. But otherwise, you, it's very tasteful the yeah. about racing. They did. They actually did race a two-door version. They did. Um, mm. Yeah, they had a two-door version. That I don't know if you remember the Datsun. You know, everybody. Yeah, the five tens, no. Yeah, it had like a sort of a yeah. not really a fastback, oh. but sort of like a fastback, no. Yeah. And yeah. I think that car then uh, had a two TG. So that was probably the the, uh, no, the the in its last run, and and they competed uh, yeah. mainly in Japan. Yeah, in Japan, they had the sixteen hundred yeah. GT version of yes, that. exactly. And, it, and that's and then okay. never saw it never left Japan. I think those cars were purely yeah. Japan only. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So so okay. Um, at at that time, were there what were the other models of Toyota? Uh. Crown and Corolla. That's pretty much it. And of course, the Land Cruiser. Yeah, the small That's Corolla. Did the yeah. they have a Corolla it. of this generation? Adam, this was their small car, right? Uh, the small? Corolla and the Corolla they used 66. Yeah. So it, you know. Right. So, yeah, yeah okay. Because this is debuted in 64. Mm. Yes. 64, but yeah. Okay. Oh. In fact, oh, they wow. introduced the Corolla to 
to give buyers who wanted something smaller uh here the choice so there and what are the what are the system. lights on the car? Those are the original uh, no, uh, halogens. <laughs> I think those are sealed beams. <laughs> they weren't even halogen, Francis. Yeah. I think oh, they, yeah, they, they are sealed they beams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. All sealed beams, no? But yeah, they, sealed beams. Beams. they were yellow. <laughs> 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 yeah. oh, well. Flashlights. In, interestingly, <laughs> also, ano, um, this particular uh, Corona was available in six different body styles in Japan. Yeah, yeah. No? Wow. They had the wagon, even the van, the, Urku, the yeah. van. They even had a pickup version of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I saw the picture right, of that. Really? Like, a, like, a, like, a, like a ranchero type of thing. And yeah. 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 Do you have any photos of that, Francis? Yeah. Do you have any photos of those different model styles or something on the web we can no, look at? Because no. it looks really uh, <laughs> I'll try looking with it. I bet you that Ranchero style was a big hit in Australia. <laughs> yeah, the pickup pick up thing. I like the way they kept the fender side mirrors as well. Mm. Those things are hard to yeah, find, huh? Yeah, the fender mirrors. Yeah. yeah. It's mainly, uh, Japan this one is a manual adjustment or it came in with a uh, mechanical one inside the cockpit. I guess this what, is manual, uh, no? Yeah, but I would. Have manual everything. I would. Yeah, yes. that's the yeah, you're to to out the and adjust and then come back again. You're referring to the side view mirror. Side view mirrors, yes. Yeah, yeah. Back in the day, in Manila, they didn't even have side view mirrors when these cars came out. Yeah. Yeah, it was an <laughs> yeah, option. Yeah, there were options. Yeah, even the air yeah. Card, yeah. No? Yeah. 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 Do you remember back in the day? I, I, I clearly remember in the 80s, the cars came standard with one side view mirror. Yep. The right yeah. side was the right, right. Yeah. Right? Seat the belts were yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> and we all we all switched our our side mirrors to a particular a particular brand. What was it? Oh, there's the truck. So was it Michel? Was it Michel Lotti? I think I can't Michel remember. Lotti was one of them. Uh, Michel Lotti was another. Yeah. Uh, oh man. Yeah. No, I remember back in the day, like the '78 Corolla. Uh, my dad would. He, he, the side mirror was aftermarket. The aircon uh, wasn't, you know, from the dealer. I think we had to install oh, it. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. Was, he, he chose Centrota there. And you know, Centrota, so, back in the day, they were the one of the first, oh, I said Centrota, they came out with a rotary air conditioner. And those oh piston God. types, man, they were, <laughs> they, they, you know, they, they uh, sucked the power out of the engine. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, <laughs> they did. That's why we had ours oh, I... installed, if I remember, after the break in period. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember so having the engine that. won't train too much. Yeah. It was very crude then. Our our, our bra the air conditioning brackets were really uh, hit or miss. Uh, most mm. of the time, the, the belts it were would pop off or wear out because tabingi yung aircon bracket. So it was a big <laughs> thing to get an all original aircon bracket from Japan. Uh, those were the things you do. You remember that, uh, Frank? I know yeah. I've been looking for those pieces. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. I, yeah. Otherwise, you, you would have to contend with metal plates na lang, locally fabricated. <laughs> yeah. No? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Then they had this big adjustment. <laughs> and then you, I think you use a wing nut yes. to just pick them yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the more you adjusted it longer, the more it would get out of alignment. Oh, it was right. <laughs> and having aircon back in the day was already a big deal for most of them. Yes. Oh, your car has aircon? <laughs> Yeah. Oh well. All right. Well, that was interesting. Um, we all like this car. Um, I I would wonder what it would look like with like the original wheels, though. Um, I think I think that's because the, these Watanabe, these are the Watanabes, right, Francis? Yeah. Yeah. And they're from what year? I think uh, they're from the eighties. I think not too far. Didn't they use hot caps? Oh. But you know. Apps, the original wheels, they weren't, they weren't very, they were actually very narrow, maybe four and a half inches wide, five inches at most. Mm -hmm. And the offset was, they were really sunk in. And they had these hubcaps that 
sort of stuck out. So it, the car, it looks funky. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, this looks good because it's got the right offset, it's got the right width, you know. But, um, you know, I, in, in the Japanese classic car show, there are maybe two or three that show up every year, all mm -hmm. original, hubcaps, everything, mm -hmm. all original. Mm -hmm. um, and they have historic plates. They're not even, uh, you know, original mileage, original paint, original interior. So yeah. Very nice. Well, once we get Ooh. once we get everything started again uh, and start going back to shows, and we can start looking at those again, you know, the ones on your end of town, uh, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, the ones, yeah, the ones we sure. do here uh, or yeah. whatever we end up getting to, right? So yeah, yeah, I'd really love to do another feature on the uh, Japanese classic car show, and particularly the Filipinos who, uh, you know, yeah. because they're very yeah. packed, you know, um, they're yeah. the yeah. car, the car guys, yeah. you know, they're. Talking yeah. about shows, I, I heard Transport Show is uh, pushing through this Yeah, I, I saw Miss Sophie's oh, um, that sounds, announcement. Yeah, that sounds yesterday. exciting, no? Yeah, yeah. That, that, mm. that, that's a gutsy move, um, honestly. Uh, it, it's, uh, I mean, it's a bold move, uh, given that you don't really know what will happen. So, I, I mean, I hope it works. I really do. Uh, is, so. is there a restriction in, in the Manila with large gatherings? Um, uh, there is at the moment. still is, yeah. Yeah, uh, so they they may be banking on that being lifted, uh, but it's hard. I mean, even even the foreign stuff for the first half of the year. Yeah, Detroit, uh, Detroit Auto Show has been canceled for the year, and they're holding yeah. a Motor Bella, um, Motor Bella outdoor event. Yeah, to, to replace it. You know. So I, I think yeah. it's outdoor should be fine, but mm. but for this one, it's indoor. But but mm, you know, it's it already ending january so if you're gonna mount a show this may you you need at least three months so if you're gonna announce it you have to do it now yeah that, that's no. why yeah. that's why they're doing it now so well i guess with the with the caveat that you know if iatf says it's a no-go then you know they just cancel it yeah yeah well that's that's but, expected you, yeah well that's i true. mean that's true. what about Actually, we had, uh, alvin I'm sorry. What about me? What about you guys? Uh, yes, we're, we're actually booked for April, but most likely it's not. It's not gonna push through. Not even an outdoor event. event uh, you know, uh, no we're we're actually gonna talk about it next week, but uh, the way things are going for, for us, may, most likely it's a no go for April. Right. Mm -hmm. April is a, isn't that like the middle of summer in the Philippines? So that's like an extremely uh, hot time to yeah, have the beginning outdoor. of summer. Right. Right. Yeah. right. Wouldn't be a good idea. Uh, we're first part of April, so it's still tolerable, yeah, but yes, uh, most likely it's a no-go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, even here, I mean, our, you know, CMI here is not is not pushing through, but still end of the year, who knows what, you know, who knows what's yeah. going to happen. Yeah. But yeah, a lot of the events have been canceled. Well, let's hope they get, let's hope things get back to normal. That's, we were talking I about know. things we missed. Actually, car it, show. It will. Miss. You know, it will. You know, we had the Spanish flu back in the twenties, and we got over that. It'd take yeah. a while. That's right. Yeah, we'll get over, we'll get over this one for sure. Yeah. We, yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you guys got over Trump, so any worse? Yeah. We haven't <laughs> yet. Sorry, I do. I know yeah, there's no yes, politics so here. So. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now we can't end on that note. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, but this, anyway, is a, yeah. this, is a this is a really nice car, uh, nice build, nice and all. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. yeah it, it's it's I, I like I I mean I I saw no. it I liked it. Um, it looks Kudos clean. I actually one. thought it was more modified than it was. No. Yeah. So oh, I like it. That's the fact that he kept it that way. Just you know, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I appreciate I that it. actually. They try and their all... best to keep things original in whatever yeah. way they can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's great. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Once again, we've been here uh, with the Cars Casually Tuner gang talking about this old car, uh, which we all liked. And we like the fact that the father and son group that built it um, kept it within the family and not, I mean, obviously the build, but also in terms of their parts, they, they swapped over Toyota yeah. parts for Toyota parts. They didn't go nuts putting in Willwood brakes or anything like that uh so very very cool we really appreciate it we all liked it um we're gonna do more of these things soon let us know which ones you like do you like the insane lamborghini do you like the half and half escort do you like the brand specific brand correct uh toyota corona 
Toyota Pet, Toyota Mark IV, Mark II, whatever it is, let us know. Um, thank you very, very, very much again for joining us. This has been Francis explaining the car. This has been Kyle talking about what he did with his own build like this. This has been Alvin telling us about the other cars that he's seen. This has been Gerard keeping us honest. I'm Carl. Thank you very, very much, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, join us again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys.